Welcome to DX Sudoku training video number 91. In this video, an ultra extreme puzzle will be solved. As a prerequisite for this video, watch DX Sudoku video number 88 titled Multi Value Elimination Part 1. For solving this ultra extreme puzzle, we will be using the MVE Method 3 algorithm used in DX Sudoku video number 90. When solving ultra extreme puzzles, it is important to have the right mindset. We are not trying to solve a 300 level puzzle without using pencil marks. These ultra extreme puzzles require meticulous notes and may require up to 40 or 50 steps before the puzzle is solved. The reason is we are creating information about how to solve the puzzle when none exists. Creating information about how to solve the puzzle takes time. The correct mindset for appreciating MVE is we are able to solve these ultra extreme puzzles at all. And another important consideration is the MVE method 3 guidelines for choosing a chaining sequence candidate. MVE will solve every puzzle, but what the guidelines do is help ensure you can solve the puzzle in the least amount of time. Consider the following Sudoku. The MVE method 3 algorithm version 2 is being shown on the left. Hudoku has rated this puzzle as having a difficulty score of 100,902. Hudoku's puzzle solver used the seven base techniques and a whopping count of 10 brute force techniques. This puzzle has one bivalue cell currently highlighted in green. However, the five candidate doesn't open up any numbers. And the eight candidate also does not open up any numbers. So for this puzzle, we are going to look at all the bilocation cells. We are currently highlighting all the cells having a possible one candidate. We find one set of bilocation cells and we update our notes. We highlight the next number and we find two sets of bilocation cells for the possible two candidate. We highlight the next number. We do not find any bilocation cells for the three. We highlight the next number. We find one set of bilocation cells for the four. We do not find any bilocation cells for the five. We find one set of bilocation cells for the six. We do not find any bilocation cells for the seven, for the eight, and for the nine. Notice how each candidate in each bilocation cell did not open up any numbers. Since nothing stands out, we will concentrate on the three sets of bilocation cells in block two. Next, we count the number of givens each bilocation cell shares with a house. And then we count the number of candidates each bilocation cell candidate would remove from the puzzle if we choose it. There is a lot of symmetry in this puzzle, so none of the bilocation candidates are standing out. It is important we choose a good starting cell because it will reduce many hours from trying to solve this puzzle. There is a shape to the constellation of givens, so we will try to take advantage of the shape. We will assume pairs of bilocation candidates in the hopes it will open up some numbers. After analyzing what would happen with choosing pairs of candidates from our bilocation cells, we found something. If we choose the 6 in cell 1,5 and the 4 in cell 1,6 on the first row, then when we remove 4 and 6 from the other cells in the first row, we get this result. Then when we complete the chaining sequence for the other numbers on the row, we end up with this result. So by choosing these two bilocation candidates as our first assumptions, we end up having six numbers set on the first row. This is a really good start for either solving the puzzle or finding our first contradiction. We choose the six in cell 1,5 to be our first assumption candidate in our chaining sequence. Before I build out the chaining sequence, I want to point out there's a one Hudoku setting I've been using in all my MVE and BVE videos. From the Edit drop-down menu, we select the Preferences menu command. Click on the Colors tab. When doing MVE or BVE, make sure you set the deviations color to white. Otherwise, when building out your chaining sequences, Hudoku will color some of the removed candidates in the default color light red. Then from the file drop-down menu, select Save Configuration. Enter MVE settings as the name of the config file. 
This way you can load your color preferences when solving puzzles using MVE or BVE. For this video, I'm not going to show the building out of the chaining sequence because it takes too long. Take a look at DX Sudoku video number 90 for seeing how the chaining sequence is built out. For this video, I'm just going to jump to the next decision point. We begin building out our chaining sequence. Be right back. I'm back. As expected, our chaining sequence stalls. We choose the 4 in cell 1,6 to be our next assumption candidate as planned. Our chaining sequence stalls and we highlight all the by value cells. Next, for each by value cell, we count how many numbers each candidate will open up in the puzzle. Cell 2,4 has the best numbers. The 7 in cell 2,4 will open up two numbers. And the 9 in cell 2,4 will also open up two numbers. Based on the heuristics, we decide the candidates in cell 2,4 will result in solving the puzzle or finding a contradiction with the least amount of work. We choose the 7 in cell 2,4 to be our next assumption candidate in the chaining sequence. Our chaining sequence ends with a contradiction. We have two twos in the house making up column 7. Next, we choose 9 as the assumption candidate in cell 2,4. We have two eights in the house making up column three. We now have a BTC type contradiction with assuming cell one comma six has a value of four. This is because both candidates in cell two comma four resulted in having a chaining sequence contradiction. As a result of the BTC type contradiction, we choose four to be the assumption candidate for cell three comma four. It's too bad the six four combination in the first row did not work out. It would have been really awesome if we were able to solve this puzzle based on that first piece of logic. Instead, we may have a long road to plow, especially if our first assumption is also wrong. But at least we found our first contradiction quickly, which is in itself useful information about the puzzle. Our current training sequence stalls, and we highlight all the by-value cells. Here are the by-value candidate counts. We choose cell 1,6 over 1,7 because cell 1,6 is in the same house as the current chaining cell 3,4. We choose 7 in cell 1,6 to be the next assumption in the chaining sequence. Our chaining sequence stalls and we highlight all the by value cells. Here are the by value candidate counts. We choose cell 2,4 over cell 6,6 .6 because it's closer to our previous chaining cells. But choosing cell 6,6 .6 is tempting because it's also in the same house with the current cell. We mark cell 6,6 .6 in case cell 2,4 results in an excessively long chaining sequence. This way we could come back to this point and choose cell 6,6 .6, hoping for a better result. We choose the 8 in cell 2,4 to be the next assumption candidate in the chaining sequence. Our chaining sequence stalls and we highlight all the by value cells. Here are the by value candidate counts. We choose cell 1,3 over cell 3,1, but it's very close. So we mark cell 3,1 as another decision point to come back to if needed. We choose the 5 in cell 1,3 to be the next assumption candidate in the chaining sequence. We have two 3s in the house making up block 9. We choose the 8 in cell 1,3 to be the next assumption candidate in the chaining sequence. Our chaining sequence stalls and we highlight all the by value cells. Here are the by value candidate counts. We choose cell 4,5 to be the next cell in the chaining sequence. We choose the 3 in cell 4,5 to be the next assumption candidate. We have two 3s in the house making up block 6. We choose the 7 in cell 4,5 to be the next assumption candidate. We have two 9s in the house making up row 4. We now have a BTC type contradiction with assuming cell 1,3 has a value of 8. This is because both candidates in cell 4,5 resulted in having a chaining sequence contradiction. This is followed by another BTC type contradiction with assuming cell 2,4 has a value of 8. This is because both candidates in cell 1,3 result in having a chaining sequence contradiction. 
We choose the 9 in cell 2, 4 as the next assumption candidate in the chaining sequence. Our chaining sequence stalls and we highlight all the bivalue cells. Here are the bivalue candidate counts. We choose cell 3, 5 as the next cell in the chaining sequence. We choose the 2 in cell 3, 5 to be the next assumption candidate. We have two 3s in the house making up column 3. We choose the 8 in cell 3, 5 to be the next assumption candidate. Our chaining sequence stalls and we highlight all the bivalue cells. Here are the bivalue candidate counts. We choose cell 1, 3 as the next cell in the chaining sequence. We choose the 5 in cell 1, 3 as the next assumption candidate. We have two 4s in the house making up row 7. At this point in solving the puzzle, we are battling lots of contradictions. Even though we have lots of contradictions, keep in mind we are solving an ultra extreme puzzle. We choose the 8 in cell 1, 3 as the next assumption candidate. Our chaining sequence stalls and we highlight all the bivalue cells. Here are the bivalue candidate counts. We choose cell 5, 3 as the next cell in the chaining sequence. We choose the 2 in cell 5, 3 as the next assumption candidate. In building out the current chaining sequence, I came across something very unusual. We have a unique rectangle type 1 at the candidate level. This is the first time I've ever seen one of the uniqueness techniques when solving an ultra extreme puzzle using MVE. This is really cool. We choose 9 as the pretend value for cell 5, 9 as shown. Our chaining sequence ends with a contradiction. We have two twos in the house making up block 6. We choose the 5 in cell 5, 3 as the next assumption candidate. Our chaining sequence ends in a contradiction, but this time we find something really spectacular. We have a new type of contradiction. We have a uniqueness problem with the four cells outlined. We essentially have two valid solutions for the current puzzle solution proposed at the candidate level. Since we assume our original puzzle has only one solution, this is a contradiction. We now have a BTC type contradiction with assuming cell 1, 3 has a value of 8. This is because both candidates in cell 5, 3 resulted in having a chaining sequence contradiction. And we have another BTC type contradiction with assuming cell 3, 5 has a value of 8. This is because both candidates in cell 1, 3 resulted in having a chaining sequence contradiction. And we have a third BTC type contradiction with assuming cell 2, 4 has a value of 9. This is because both candidates in cell 3, 5 resulted in having a chaining sequence contradiction. A three level deep backtracking effort is how you know you are working on a difficult puzzle. Generally, what I have found is having three or four correct values early on in the MVE chaining sequence will solve most puzzles very quickly. The more correct numbers you have early in the chaining sequence, the quicker the later contradictions will come. The later contradictions will keep us on track when solving this puzzle. So after these three BTC type contradictions, maybe our chaining sequence is finally on the right track. We choose the 8 in cell 1, 6 as the next assumption candidate. Our chaining sequence stalls and we highlight all the bivalue cells. Here are the bivalue candidate counts. We choose cell 3, 5 as the next cell in the chaining sequence. And we choose the 2 in cell 3, 5 as the next assumption candidate. We get a contradiction with no 5 in block 7. Next, we choose the 9 in cell 3, 5 as the next assumption candidate. Our chaining sequence stalls and we highlight all the bivalue cells. Here are the bivalue candidate counts. We choose cell 5, 4 as the next cell in the chaining sequence. We choose the 1 in cell 5, 4 as the next assumption candidate. Our chaining sequence stalls and we highlight all the bivalue cells. Here are the bivalue candidate counts. We choose cell 4, 5 as the next cell in the chaining sequence. 
and we choose the 3 in cell 4, 5 to be our next assumption candidate. And boom! Just like that, our MVE chaining sequence completes without having any contradictions. We double check for any contradiction by making sure there's only one of each number in each house. We find no contradictions. We double click on each open cell to select the lone remaining candidate as the value of the cell. After an epic chaining sequence battle, the puzzle is now solved. This completes the Exodoku training video number 91. Please support the Exodoku. Thank you for watching.